I love the Met. It's a museum in New York City. I visited there a couple times, but there's actually a huge online collection as well. And in this video, I'm going to show you exactly how you can search through the Met to find public domain images that you can use for your artwork. It's completely free, it's completely legal, and it's quite fun. Let's jump in. Okay, so first things first, how do you find this gosh darn link to the Metropolitan Museum? So I'm in Google, I type in the Met Museum, and then I'm going to click on the first link, the Metropolitan Museum of Art Home. When you get to here, you're going to click Explore the Collection. Okay, so now I'm going through this and I'm looking at Explore the Collection, and I, there's Collection Highlights and there's Open Access. This is the one you want. Open access, 375,000 high-res images, public domain works. This is the page you want. Now, I'll put a link to this in the video description below, so you can just click and it'll just bring you here. This is the search portal, and this deserves a little bit of time to make sure that you're searching correctly. If you have highlights on, you'll get a lot less search results. So, for example, if I type in cat, it says 357 results, but if I remove highlights, I now get 23,000 results for CAT. So you definitely want to have highlights off if you're looking for everything inside of the Met. You also want to make sure this open access is turned on. If open access is turned off, you'll see more results, but you don't want the ones that aren't open access because open access means they're public domain. So everything now that I see, I'm going to click on this one over here, Musk CAT. This is the picture. And as I scroll down, you can see here it says public domain right there. As I scroll on down, you'll also see it says API access on the lower right hand side. When I click on that, it says open access and it's now in the Met collection. This is available for unrestricted commercial and non-commercial use without permission or fee. In other words, it's yours. You can do whatever you want with this, with this picture. You could download it as is and sell it. You can modify it. You can create original artwork from it. You can do whatever you like with it. So here's the actual picture. I'm just simply going to click on the picture. And this now gives me a nice high res scan. I can go to the top left where I can zoom in. He's looking a little angry there, eh? So that's a nice high quality zoom in. I can also scroll back out with the little minus button. And then I simply right click and I can save the image if I so choose. Down at the bottom, there are also related objects. So if you find something you like, you can also go down here and you can click on something similarly. So I'm going to click Hawk on a Pine and this now gives me a related object. Again, just double check that it says public domain, which this one does, and then I can click on it. I can zoom in if I like and I can see this in more detail. I can also right click. I could open it in a new tab and that gives me a nice really high res version of this. This is like a tapestry. Very cool. And I can again right click it to save it. And when you're done looking at the object or the picture or the painting, you simply click on the top left, it says back to search results, and that will take you back to the search results here. Now you can also remove the word cat and you can just click the search button. What that will do now is that will show you pretty much everything that is artwork with image and open access. So now I'm just scrolling through pretty much everything and this is just unfiltered. A really nice search feature on the Met is that you can select the object type, which is right here. It says filter by object type and material. When I click on that, this opens up a massive plethora of different types of artwork. So for example, if you wanted to see only paintings, well, there's 8,100 paintings. So if I click on that, now this will only show paintings, artworks with image, open access. I can now scroll through and I can see painting after painting after painting. These are all free to use. These are all open access. I'm going to click on the little fan there. Here's a nice Asian fan, public domain. I can also down, download it by clicking the little download button on the right hand side. It's right underneath the image. So it's over there. I can just simply click the download button and that will give me a high res scan that then I can just right click and download. Save image. Okay, so I'm going to show you now five little hidden gems on the Met that I really like using this search and filtering function. Okay, the first thing that I'm going to show you is I'm going to type into the search window maps. 
and when I search it says 839 results for maps. Again, make sure that your artwork with image is selected and make sure that the open access is selected. If you have way less results than this, it's probably because your highlights are on. You don't want highlights, so make sure you have all of them showing. Now as I scroll down, I can see, I'm just going to click open a couple here. There's some really beautiful high-res maps. So this is one that is the city of Tainan, and as we can see here, this is absolutely gorgeous. And we can zoom in, and we can see this is pretty cool stuff. We've also got a map of the 18th century. We can see here, here's the original map, and then here's some supplementary artwork as well. So this is like a collection. Again, you can download this by simply clicking the download button on the bottom right. Double check as always that it's public, public domain, which it is. And then you can see here, there's related objects underneath. These are absolutely gorgeous engravings. Here's a map of New York. Maps, old vintage maps are quite popular. Again, they're in the public domain, but if you can find high quality maps, you can make some really nice wall art with them. And I think these make spectacular den pictures. What you would do is you'd clean them up. So you'd remove the matting, for example, and you could add in your own background if you wanted, or you could just clean up the images if you've got lines on it, that sort of thing. The second hidden gem I'm going to type into the search window is Japanese. I'm going to get back 10,000 results, but what I'm going to do is scroll on down and underneath under object type, so this is this little menu that you can expand, I'm going to go down here to drawings and there's 92 drawings so I'm going to click on that and now it's only going to give me 92 results but these results are pretty cool. I'm just going to pop this one open and this one open. We can see here we've got some historical Japanese ink drawings and you could run this through Inkscape for example and you could make this into a great design for a t-shirt, a coffee mug, a fine art print. You basically if you run this through Inkscape this all of this remainder piece would be removed and you'd be left with just the original drawing. Okay, the third one's actually not really a search term, it's just a type of object. So I'm in the main search window, and as I scroll on down here, underneath object type, what I'm looking for is etching. There's 17,109 etchings. So when I click on etching, I'm now going to get back a whole bunch of medieval style of pencil drawings, charcoal drawings, sketches, and illustrations. So these can be great if you're using them for a book, if you're using them for fine art prints, Anything medieval, angels, devils, this is very Leonardo feeling of art. These are awesome, awesome old black and white and charcoal drawings. Hidden gem number four, I type in trading cards. Again, artworks with image pops up, open access pops up, and as I scroll on down, I can see there's lots of old vintage baseball cards that are actually in the public domain. So you could use these for artwork, you can use these for fine art prints, you could actually collect a whole bunch of them together and you could even make a pastiche of all different baseball players and you could make a huge art print. The fifth hidden gem is sort of not really based on any one particular thing, but I'm just going to type in the word pattern. I'm going to click on prints. So now I've got 505 results. I scroll on down and I can see there's different patterns here. Many of them are abstract. And you, again, you can use these to make your own patterns or you could just simply make art prints out of these. And what I really like about this is that because these are vintage already, you can use them as textured. You could just take a sample, say in Photoshop, and just repeat the pattern, or you can just create your own quilt. There's all sorts of great flower patterns and all sorts of great abstract patterns. I hope you found this video helpful, and as always, if you did, please do hit that like button. Here's another video that shows the pitfalls you can run into using public domain artworks. So you'll want to make sure you check that out. Thanks a lot for watching.